What are the deal breakers for the institution? Examples of not to do for applications. Okay, that's an interesting <laughs> question. What are the deal breakers? Closed-mindedness. We're here to to collaborate, to discuss, to work together. Um, if you're not interested in being part of a community, um, that that doesn't work so much for the foundation. We really are an ecosystem. That it's not only going to a residency, produce something, and then leave. As you said before, it's like being part of a community and that feels really interesting and I think it's really needed nowadays. Hello, good morning everybody. My name is Andrea Bustillos. I'm the Curatorial Director of Ayarcut and as you already know, we are here with Ana Eftigina, and this time with Jasia Hamudi for our next edition of Pages, where Jasia is going to tell us uh, a lot about Onyx Foundation and the residency programs and ONX Studios. Without any further comment, I give you the word, Anna, and maybe you can introduce us to Jasia. Hello, everyone. Um, I will be moderating today. Uh, together with uh, um, Andrea, and we are happy to have our guest, uh, Jazia Hamoudi. Let me briefly introduce you. Uh, and it is um, our pleasure to have uh, you here today. Um, Jazia has a very diverse background, and right now she's the deputy director of Onassis's ONX studio in, in New York. This is an extended reality accelerator in, in New York City. And she specializes in contemporary art and immersive technologies and holds degrees in art history and museum studies. Before joining Ionic, Jazza served also as studio manager at, for Jacob Kutsk Stinson, and uh, she brought projects to major festivals such as SXSW and the Venice Biennial, and some great venues such as Serpentine Galleries. She also did curatorial work at Cortland Institute and uh, of Art and Barbican Center in London. So also on the side, Jazza leads uh, art and architecture tours in her native Morocco. Very excited to have you, and uh, we prepared some questions to learn more about your work and about the foundation's work. Um, I think the first uh, um, thing I, 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 I um, paid attention to is that Onassis's foundation is focused on people's and human potential, which uh, resonates very much with me personally and with the programs that IRCUT aims to bring to the areas in Mexico and in Latin America. Um, so yeah, maybe we can uh, ask you first about uh, the uh, history of their residency programs and the foundation and how they started programs in New York as well. And, uh, okay, yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, Anna and Andrea, it's so nice to be with you today. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm uh, really happy to be speaking with you and your audience. Um, so the Onassis Foundation's residencies called AIR, A-I-R, were founded in 2019 in their current iteration, really to foster a global community of artists in the development of their work. So the residencies are really not product oriented. They're more about supporting artists and ongoing development of really kind of critical aesthetic and intellectual projects. Um, the studio, Onyx Studio, um, is part of that greater goal of the foundation. It was founded in 2020 in partnership with New Inc., which is the new museum's incubator for art and technology. The studio's goal is to foster artists working in new media across genres um, to make really exciting work. And the, the idea is to support artists from the inception of their idea through to development di and distribution. So our hope is to become a, a holistic hub for uh, creative production. Um, really, uh, we're really not looking to get um, to gain anything besides the, the growth of a creative community and a, uh, a feasible pipeline and sustainable pipeline for creative pro practice in uh, contemporary arts today. 
great to hear that. And um, I um, understand that also the residency program in Athens also is open for inter uh, interdisciplinary artists. Is it uh, open for everyone in the world or how does it work usually? Yeah, absolutely. So the air residencies in Athens are open to artists from any discipline and any background. They normally um, last for three months and you're supported by the foundation for travel and accommodations as well as research. Again, the idea of this residency is to foster creativity and community. So again, it's not product oriented. Um, and the goal is to help you really dig into and develop your ideas and your projects. And an important note to make is that at the end of the residency term, your relationship with Onassis is not over. All artists who have participated in the residencies are encouraged to remain in contact. We stay deeply connected with them. Um, the studio spaces in both Athens and New York are always open to former participants to come back and work more. We always want to know what our artists are up to and how we can be supportive of them. So while the initial residency phase is three months long across a 10 month period, the relationship is ongoing. Um, the, so while AIR in, in Athens is open to all media, Onyx is really focused on new media here in New York. There is a deep relationship between the two programs in that we do receive here in New York many artists from the Athenian ecosystem who work in new media or who have new media elements in their practice. For artists who are not working in new media, we're still ha very happy to receive them in New York but our work with them will be primarily curatorial or in the form of networking because the space here is really set up for new media and immersive um, technology based work. So, sorry, uh, when you say the, the relation or uh, it's going to be more curatorial, what do you mean? So for artists whose work we don't develop from a production standpoint here in New York, we share with them a great network of curators, of art spaces, of um, residencies. So we offer that kind of support, okay. our community building support. Um, so, you know, so even artists who are working in genres that we don't have the tools to build, there is another offering. But can, can they apply to the residency in New York? So if you are working out without technology, as we would, as we would mm -hmm. consider it, um, it's really the Athenian okay. residency that is the, that, that would be of interest to you. That's where, uh, that is the hub for um, really cross genre work. If you're, if you have a new media practice, then you come okay. to us in New York. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's quite, I think it's, quite a unique program um, at the Accelerator in, in New York. And it also has a membership model, which is mm -hmm. different from a regular residency. So maybe we could talk more about this membership, how it works. It also is it for a certain time or is it open-ended? And uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we're, we're really lucky to be able to offer completely open-ended membership. The way that it works is that you as an artist apply with the project you would like to develop in the studio by acquainting yourself with our tools and our program, which can be found on our website, onyx.studio. Um, and when accepted into the membership, you have 24 seven access indefinitely, as long as it's useful to you. And the only thing that we ask is that you stay involved, you stay in touch. Um, and those resources are free. Um, in addition to the production resources that we offer in the studio, we also support our members with seed grants, um, opportunities to travel and exhibit with us at festivals such as IDFA in Amsterdam or South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, um, and our growing network of curators and organizations like yourselves that we like to connect our membership with. Yeah, so exactly. You were recently an international documentary film festival in Amsterdam. Uh, so as I understood, you presented 
several films of your that were created in the studio by your members? Yeah, we we um, we presented three works. We were lucky to have three works included in the expanded documentary section. So they weren't strictly films, but mm -hmm. curator there, Casper Sonnen, has really been a uh, a pillar of the XR community, and we're very lucky to be able to work with him. This was our biggest showing at IDFA, and we hope to really continue that relationship. Such an incredible crossing ground of global creators and ideas that we find really important. So um, those kinds of relationships with festivals are really important to us in helping our members build uh, pipelines for sustainable careers, find distribution and exhibition opportunities for their work. Uh, and find also importantly support for the next project because that's always on everyone's mind. Yeah, that's true. But I participated in one of your uh, events, uh, Demoda Conference uh, in New York. I was so excited to see and reconnect with Alfreda Salazar Paro, who is from mm -hmm. Mexico and is living in Mexico at the moment. Um, and uh, so. I, it, it, he, his, he, it was his project that uh, he presented in a form of a conference. So, I mean, or it could be a series of workshops just to understand, um, just to explain that actually um, engagement with public is also a very uh, great opportunity um, on their, you know, using the studio menu and its network. Um, I don't know, maybe you can also give a couple other examples uh, of projects that you realize with the members. Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I do just want to say that Alfredo is an incredible member. We're so happy to have him, amazing artist and creative technologist. And he, he applied to the membership with a project that he wanted to develop at Onyx and then came to us with his incredible digital museum, Demoda, and uh, said that he, you know, he was looking for for exhibition venues, it's a it's a uh, exhibition within a VR, so within a VR museum. This mm -hmm. edition was curated by Christian Paul, who is at the Whitney. Um, so we were so happy to be able to exhibit his work and open it up to the public. So we are a hybrid production and exhibition space, and we do hold programming regularly that is in partnership with our partner institutions. Um, like NYU, Rhizome, New Inc., Games for Change, and Pioneer Works, and for our members. You know, when we have a member who has this incredible museum, we're eager to 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 be able to open that up to the public. Um, we also, you know, in Sena, we collaborate with a lot of other institutions for our programming. Currently, we're about to participate in a theater festival called Under the Radar that's taking place across venues in New York City, including at Lincoln Center, um, at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, at Brick, which is also in Brooklyn, and several other really, the Invisible Dog Center as well. These great venues, and we're presenting a member's work called Bag of Worms, for four days during the festival. So we're really lucky to have this very flexible hybrid space where we can serve members, you know, uh, on that entire end of what it means to have a creative career from the production through to presentation. Um, another piece that we're very, very proud of is called Constantinopoliad by our member sister Sylvester. That is a, uh, she, she's made a handmade book about the lost years of this Greek poet, C.P. Kavafi. And the audience reads the book along with her in this incredible and very intimate audiovisual experience. So we actually commissioned the work and uh, have been able to present it in New York at National Sawdust, um, in Athens. Um, and also now in some other venues that I can't tell you about, but we're very excited to support the work in traveling and in new iterations. So you think that maybe a technology studio wouldn't be interested in a book-based project, but we very much are uh, interested in interdisciplinarity. It's amazing. And I, um, I was thinking, uh, what's the process of also applying to membership? Do you ask the artist to develop an exact idea? and um, like business, I don't know, business plan, or not a business plan, but a budget-related uh, um, program? 
So in the, to apply to membership, you don't need to submit a budget, but you do need to submit a project that you'd like to work on. So we ask that you, and, and the idea behind that is that we want to see that the members are coming really to work, have thought about the studio, have thought about their resources and our needs and how we can support them and are coming to work on something that we can help them actually execute, you know, because that's what we, we really want to, you know, we really want to support that. We really want to be a hub for you to evolve. So you apply with a project that you want to execute and then when you're admitted, um, you have free access to the resources of the studio. If you are looking for budget, we do have seed grants, other kinds of travel support, as I've said, available, and that requires reapproaching us um, with that ask. And we see what we can accommodate, or if we have other institutional partners or friends who we can connect you with. So you don't need to come with every single thing worked out yet. But the, the idea is to come with something tangibly that you want to push forward, that you can envision doing so with us. But that's only for the membership. For the, for the residency, I guess there's an open call and I guess there are some criteria. Maybe can you tell us a little bit about the criteria of the open call? Sure. So the uh, Onassis Air open call that takes place in Athens is, is very customized and open-ended. Uh, you do need to come with an idea, at least, if not an artwork that you want to develop. But the, the real benefit and beauty of that residency is that it's very bespoke and open-ended. You can come from any background, any genre, um, and, and present us with um, what you want to work on and we will customize it and, and, and tailor it to what your needs are, given that we can accommodate those needs. Of course, we can't send you to the moon, but we can bring you to Athens to, to, to do some serious work. <laughs> and are, are, Sorry, are there any criteria in terms of age, uh, no. nationality, anything? Nothing like okay. that. No, open to everyone. That's very um, nice. uh, you know, uh, uh, over 18. Oh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> we, your parents, you have to yes. be an adult, yes. but other, it's, it's really open to everyone. Okay. Perfect. I just have another question about um, application for mem membership uh, mm -hmm. and on next. So uh, I think I saw on the website that you are requested to submit uh, like a pitch deck or a presentation of a project. So. Mm -hmm. Is this important uh, to include maybe past project or like what is the structure you expect to have? Because it's also like, I don't think I saw any specific criteria, but what is maybe a best case practice for this application? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, so, so it is quite open-ended, but best practices really is that you submit uh, the, your kind of your core idea and project description to the degree that you know it any visual references that you may have for the project. Perhaps you have created a small trailer for it, or perhaps there is a past iteration, or perhaps you simply have uh, inspiration ideas or some photographs that you have taken that you include there. It's also great to, we do ask that you um, submit your website or um, your resume because that helps us contextualize you and also describe what you would like to do in the studio to the best of your idea, uh, 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 the best of your ability. So that can be, I'm at the very beginning of this project. I have these three themes. I'm really coming to experiment with motion capture because I want to eventually work with dancers. Or it can be much more specific, like I have made three quarters of this project. Um, I'm here doing the last push. I need to do some recordings for VR. I, you know, that's what I want to do. But so um, it can be at any stage. Uh, it can be at quite an early stage of development or, you know, towards the end there and you need the final push. And that can happen at, uh, anytime all year long, like they can submit at any moment of the year. Yes, they, you can submit at any any point during the year. The application is rolling and open. We review applicants two to three times a year, usually once in the spring, 
once in the late summer and once in the late fall. That is contingent on the, the space that we have in the membership. You know, so far we have we have 50 members. Um, we are lo very lucky to be able to keep taking on members, uh, but we are being thoughtful about how many people we take on in each round. And it's it's between three and five new members who are admitted in the kind of at least two periods throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So it looks like you also uh, become like uh, producing su support for their art project, like mm. a small team that would, you know, help generate ideas of how to move the project forward. Is this, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's a big part of our work as well. So the core team here in New York uh, consists of me, the program director, our technical director, Matthew Niederhauser, and our innovation director, John Fitzgerald. Uh, what's amazing about Matthew and John is that they're both artists themselves and longtime creative, uh, creative practitioners and producers. So we're able to give you a lot of um, curatorial support from my end, networking support and product development from my end, and then the really technological support and advice from Matthew and John. So the three of us try to uh, make up the whole system and spend a lot of time with members serving the various needs that these kinds of multidisciplinary installations, immersive projects, films, et cetera, require. Yes, yeah, it is very encouraging to, because I, I understand that projects in, in the new media, they're so, um, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty around it because there's new, emerging technology and it's also usually is very time consuming and knowledge consuming and it's great to have someone to to think with you to <laughs> absolutely and we're we're very cognizant of that that um that the these works in contemporary art in, increasingly is incredibly collaborative and it's rare that you have any one person who can do it all and also the pressures on artists are enormous. You know, you have to be the primary creator, you have to be your own producer, you have to be your own agent, you have to be your own researcher and writer, you know, so we try to help and, and take some of that burden off of the membership so that they can focus on creating. And um, it's, it's very, very challenging to be an artist these days. Yes. Completely. So do does it also happen that you have artist uh, groups or collectives, both in Athens and in New York, or? Often, yeah. I mean, most of our artists work collaboratively, and we're very open to um, the, our, our core members, collaborators. You know, you can come in and work with your whole team. Uh, we're not interested in kind of gatekeeping in that way. Uh, we do sometimes have artist collectives who come in or artists who have, you know, for example, uh, Alfredo for Demoto usually collaborates with a curator and a group of artists. So we were very open to that and now are in touch with some of the other artists who are in that exhibition. So that's very enriching for us to be able to not only work with you, but work with your, you know, team and trusted collaborators, that kind of thing. Then I have two questions from the public that have, they have sent them before. Yeah, go ahead with them. Okay, so the first one, what are the deal breakers for the institution? Examples of not to do for applications or... Okay, that's an interesting <laughs> question. What are the deal breakers? The deal breaker, a, a deal breaker would be closed-mindedness, you know, um, we're here to to collaborate, to discuss, to work together. Um, if you're not interested in being part of a community, um, that that doesn't work so much for the foundation. We really are an ecosystem. Um, that I would say really is the only deal breaker. You know, of course, um, uh, coming with pre prejudice hatred um, is not acceptable to us. Of course, we all have our unconscious biases, but you have to be open to exploring even those when you join a community like ours. Absolutely. 
Uh, and the last one is a tip to have a successful application. Okay, um, so a lot of detail, I would say. Even if you are not completely sure of where your project is going, the more information you can provide, the better. So for example, if, if your project is or your idea is still in early stages, tell us about what has inspired you or the reading um, or the travel or the art that has fostered that idea. Um, if there are people who you're working with or have worked with in the past, we want to know about that. Um, really tr giving us a sense of who you are and what you really want to do uh, is very important. And, it, and that's okay if that changes. Amazing. <laughs> I think I have one more question about the alumni, uh, like the, the people who were in residence in the past. Do, do, do you have special events for them or how, how do they keep in touch with you? Yeah, so we check in with them very regularly. We do, they are invited and welcome to all of our public programs, as well as some of our programming that's just for artists, for example, workshops on a new technology or a new technique. Um, they are also always considered for future exhibitions and programming. Um, it really is, it's a big part of our mandate and work to stay in touch with them. They also sometimes end up as part of our exhibitions, like the foundation has a big outdoor digital exhibition called Plasmata that sometimes former fellows are considered for. Uh, we're also always here to support our former alumni um, in finding new residencies and opportunities through our network. So we spend a lot of time writing letters of recommendation, um, connecting you with your, your next institution for your next evolution, that kind of thing. Oh, that's that's really amazing. valuable. Yeah, yes. very valuable. <laughs> yes, completely. Wow. I think that's something very important, like also for artists that apply to, to know that what you said before, that it's not only going to a residency, produce something and then leave, you know, like, it's, yeah. uh, as you said before, it's like being part of a community and that feels really interesting. And I think it's really needed nowadays. So I yeah. think that's really nice. Yeah, we're really, we're not a, we're really not a factory. We're really working as an ecosystem and, and the artists, our artists are, are essential community members. We, you know, we love being in touch with them. Amazing. Thank you very much for sharing all these great uh, inspirational ideas and your approaches. I guess um, even not only artists, but other residences can, <laughs> can learn new things and think about changing approaches, making more open-ended maybe, <laughs> which is, I think, still uh, rare. Um, yeah, so hopefully um, the Latin American artists will be interested in applying to some of their new programs. Yes, <laughs> yes please do. The, the next open call for AIR will come out in the spring, I believe in March. And of course, if you uh, are interested in Onyx or working in new media specifically, that's always open. So just go to our website, onx.studio, and you'll see the application link there. Amazing. Thank you very much, Yasia. Thank you very much, Anna. Yes. Uh, thank you, Andrea, for hosting. And I think also our good.com uh, page also will have information about uh, ONAS's open calls yes. and ONX Studio. So yeah, that will yes. be available for everyone. Wonderful. I hope to see a flood of new applications. That would be great. I hope so, yes. Yeah.